unleashing female power. Being a disruptor. I'm always constantly telling the truth. I love art, art, art. That's all her life. She's alive and female. Being a woman, what it meant. Prove him wrong. Girls, 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 I'm the world. We're back in the place. Welcome to the Art Pod. I'm your host, Carolina, and I'll be your guide through this Pandora's box. Strap yourselves in for a journey through the art world where we bring you candid conversations, untold stories, uncover industry secrets, and celebrate the women who are shaping its future. Because in the Art Pod, the spotlight is always on the girls. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Art Pod. My guest today is Rain Lu. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, so a little bit about Rain. Rain Lu is the founder of the gallery Rain Rain, an art advisor and a freelance writer based in New York City. She frequently travels to Asia for her work. In 2011, she opened her gallery in China, focusing on supporting emerging Chinese artists. After relocating to New York in 2017, the gallery underwent a rebranding and was relaunched in 2022 with a physical space opening in 2023. This transformation highlighted its dedication to emerging artists and, dias- and diaspora communities, evolving into an open and vib- vibrant community that values art and fosters connections between diverse cultural perspectives. Rain's insight in, Rain's insights into the art ecosystem and market, as well as her interviews, have been featured in um, respected publications such as Artnet, Art, Art News China, Harper's Bazaar, Art China, and more. Thank well, you. I would like to start our episode today with asking you a little bit about what it's like to run a gallery, kind of like um, your day to day, your main focus, if you can start there. Sure. Um, thank you for having me again. Uh, running a gallery, I mean, there's a, I feel there's an endless task to do, like from very small tasks like making document to reach out to artists, doing the studio visit, um, from like welcome uh, guests to visit the show, talking about show, introduce artists to participate art fairs. Um, so running a gallery, it involves a lot of like administrative task management, artist studio visit, um, a lot of communications. Um, yeah, it's just a, a diversity of all kinds of tasks involved in um, everyday life. So running a gallery, I feel my life and the work and happening at the same time. Mm-hmm. So it has been a great journey for me. That's that's amazing. And you originally started the gallery in China yes. and then you moved it to the United States. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of first running the gallery in China and mm-hmm. how that was different from running it here? Sure. Um, so I studied in Australia and after I finished my studying in Australia, I moved back to China. And my dad, he's in the art world in China. He is art historian and curator. So I followed him, assisted him in his curatorial project for a short while. And then I had this opportunity to uh, find, find this great space and started my own gallery. So back then in 2011, I didn't really have any experience of running a gallery. Mm-hmm. So starting from scratch, I basically do the work, visit the artist, um, just learning while doing it. So, and so from 2011, um, and slowly I have two or three people in, on my team, we mm-hmm. can work together. Um, and from the third year, we started to join ArtFest uh, in Asia. So. It's a process like from knowing not too many about how to running a gallery Mm -hmm. and slowly accumulate the experience, uh, get to know more people in the art world in China. Um, And then the experience of starting a gallery space again in New York is there's similarities Mm -hmm. um, because it's again it's like uh, starting a startup again Um, and the environment and people around me are totally different the culture is different Um, but in terms of running a gallery I mean 
gallery, I feel it's a very traditional model. Mm-hmm. Um, but because the environment changed, the place changes. And so I need to, um, the way how I look at art, um, who are the people I want to approach and who are the artists that I wanted to uh, find um, also change as well. So um, I think in general, the way in terms of Operation, I guess it's similar, Mm -hmm. but how, say, for example, how to build, what kind of gallery program I need to build up um, and what kind of show I want to to do in the gallery and what um, which fair I wanted to participate. These kind of more on the strategic side uh, of uh, thinking or planning uh, would be very different. Yeah, um, I'm glad that you brought that up because... I wanted to ask you when you were in China, what sort of art fairs did you participate in while you were in China? Uh, sure. Um, so from the third year um, after the gallery started, uh, we started to participate fairs in Beijing, uh, Shanghai, and we also try uh, try to apply for Art Basel Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. So throughout the years, we joined Art Basel Hong Kong twice, and also we participated fairs in Beijing and Shanghai every year. And also very interestingly, we participated once um, this art fair called Moving Image Art Fair. I think they had it in New York before as well, but the one I participated was in Istanbul. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a very interesting experience. Um, and also we partic- like at the very, I feel at the very beginning, I tried to participate as many okay. fairs as possible. Um, first, first of, uh, because the gallery w- was, uh, I think I have to go back to uh, talk about the briefly about the city where I started yeah. the the gallery. Yeah. So the city is Chengdu. That's where I'm from. Mm-hmm. So in my city, there are only there are a lot of galleries, but most of the gallery they are more dealing with traditional art. Okay. So for contemporary art, there are only two uh, two or three galleries in my city. So in order to Um, get the name out there in order to meet more uh, clients or people who are uh, focusing on contemporary art. I have to be out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And also the artists that I work with, they are Mm, they they were living in Beijing or Shanghai, so I traveled quite frequently. Um, so in terms of art fair, at the beginning, I just try to be be out there, yeah. try to meet new people, build up new cont- uh, contact. I um, we also participated fairs in Taiwan mm-hmm. and Singapore to just try to know more about the local market. Um, but as time goes, I feel um, the way how I want to um, plan around art fair participation uh, is sort of narrowed down. Mm-hmm. So my focus then was to expand the, um, the market or the clientele in Asia and mm-hmm. introduce my artists to uh, the collector in the Asian region. So I feel eventually um, if I participate fairs in Hong Kong, say Art Basel Hong Kong, and also uh, fairs in Shanghai, that would be sufficient. Yeah, that, that, that makes complete sense. So then I assume, like you mentioned, your strategy for New York would be different in terms of art fairs. Yeah. What are the some of the art fairs that you have recently participated in or that you're looking forward to participating in? Sure. Uh, because the gallery is fairly new. Mm-hmm. So we the space opened last September. So up to now, it's not even a year. Mm-hmm. Um, this May, we participated a future fair. So okay. that was our actually our first fair in New York. Uh, it was really great. And it was, again, it was really great to be out there and meet people and let more people know about um, the gallery. Um, in the future, um, I think for right now, the reason, one of the reasons I wanted to, or I decided to open this space in New York, uh, instead of continue the gallery back in China is I really love the diversity 
um, the diverse art scene in New York. I think um, I feel there's a lot of um, potentials and possibilities. And also there are a lot of artists from all different kinds of cultural background. Mm -hmm. um, so I really wanted to give a go. And I think why not to just start things again here in New York. So in the future, in the near future, I... Uh, will plan to participate like fairs like NADA, okay. uh, um, Untitled Art mm -hmm. Fairs. Um, so for right now in the fu near future, I wanted to um, continue let more people know about the gallery and then start to build up the local com um, community. Yeah, that's that's terrific. Um, as we know, at least the people who work in the art world, art fairs tend to be very, you know, costly for, mm. for participating for mm. galleries. Do you think that that outweighs sort of the benefits that you get from being at the fair? Mm. Um, yes, I think a lot is, depends on how, where the market is. For example, I talked to some galleries. Um, they were talking about how the market slowed down, say, since last year, um, and participating fairs are getting more expensive mm -hmm. and costly. Um, as for me, I feel it's very important is, um, like, why, like, the purpose that you wanted to participate a certain fair. And each fair also, they position, each fair is also very different. Mm -hmm. So which artists to bring, um, it requires some strategic planning. Um, but as for me, uh, at this moment, I think the most important thing is I have my artist. And then I can plan, okay, which fair is good to uh, go and also in terms of when to go that's also, also um, the timing is also yeah. very important to think about yeah so I want to talk about the programming at your gallery okay um what how did you structure the programming in China as opposed to New York mm -hmm. um did you bring the same artist over to New York and how many artists you have that you're currently representing yeah so um when I was running the gallery uh in China so my um, primary focus uh, were working with uh, Chinese emergent and mid-career artists. So all the artists that um, I visit them in different city uh, within the China, uh, there are a lot of artists. In, there are a lot of great um, artists in China. So back then, um, well, I think still now, like there, the, the market there, um, there's a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. So also back then, I feel it, it's great. It's a great um, time to sort of um, supporting and discovering um, emerging artists, but also slowly um, build up the, the market. And also um, around 2011, 2012, I think from that period, there were more and more younger generation people. They started to um, go to museum, go to gallery, start to buy art. Mm -hmm. So there was this kind of uh, tendency. So um, so yeah. So when I was running the gallery in China, my main focus was to introduce. Um, great talent, talented uh, Chinese emerging artists to um, collector and audiences within um, Asian region. Um, and now in New York, again, because it's a totally different place. Um, so for me, at this moment, uh, the artists that I have been working with right now, or I'm going to work with, they are all based in the US. Okay. Um, and some of them, they have kind of Asian cultural background. Some of them are just American artists. Yeah. For me, I, yeah, I often, um, often I, um, I am asked the question like, okay, are you, uh, trying to promoting Chinese artists here mm -hmm. in New York? Um, so I feel uh, when people see me and I'm from China, knowing me, uh, I'm from China, they will somehow automatically think, oh, you open a gallery in Chinatown, um, you must 
be like uh, promoting Chinese artists. So for me, I think it's important to support artists of um, similar cultural background, but, it, uh, but even more important um, to bringing different um, kind of context into the gallery space. So for me, it's important to work with artists from different cultural background, also artists who doing different kind of art um, into gallery space um, to create this kind of dialogue. So I, I don't like to be categorized mm -hmm. or I don't want it to be um, kind of limited within a certain type of things. Uh, and also art in general, it's a free, it, 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 art itself is a, representation of freedom. Yeah. So I think it's great to be just open-minded, um, looking at the art and spot talented art artists and then bringing to the gallery space. Yeah. That's that's very well put. You're, <laughs> you're looking to be very well-rounded in, in your programming, which is great. Um, the artists that you currently show, are they more emerging? Are they mid-career? Where are they on the spectrum? And also, how do you find the artists that you want to show? Sure. Yeah, um, currently, um, so we just closed our fourth exhibition. Uh, so currently, the artists I have been working with, they are emerging artists. So some of them just graduated from their MFA program. Mm -hmm. Some of them might be graduated a few years ago um, but they're most of them are in their early to mid career that kind of okay. range um, so I'm sorry what's the the, the next one was how do you find them oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of people ask me this question I think nowadays there's a lot of um, uh, source where you can um, find the artist. Um, I go around to see, I try to see exhibition um, as many as possible, especially um, gallery exhibition. Mm -hmm. There's so many galleries around my, um, where my gallery located. Mm -hmm. So especially in group shows, sometimes I, I will see some interesting work and then I will uh, do some research on who is the artist and then I will reach out and try to meet them in their studio. Um, Instagram can be also can be a good um, kind of place to um, see some interesting images and then I will just click on um, the artist's profile and check their um, website and then if I feel oh this is some interesting work I'll reach out again and then sometimes um, I, I also find that as the gallery open door to different audiences as the exhibition goes on there are some artists also would um, come to visit the gallery and then through this uh, interaction I would also get to know more um, different artists um, I also go to studio uh, open studios mm -hmm. um, like um, at those like residency program yeah. and also MFA open studio things that show um, what else? Sometimes artists, a uh, friend would recommend some artists as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm constantly um, doing my research on artists. Okay. Yeah. I used to work for a gallery gallery in the Lower East Side mm -hmm. and we used to get a ton of like unsolicited submissions from artists, which mm -hmm. I'm sure you do as well. <laughs> uh, do you ever look at those or do you kind of just just you know, pick your own artists that, like you mentioned, you mm. go through, you know, open studios, word of mouth, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Or do you actually do take a look at some of the submissions? Yeah. Um, mm, like I said, the gallery is still new. So we started to receive those mm -hmm. kind of email. I check every email. Okay. Um, but for now, I think it's very important for me to go to the artist and to find artists that would feed the gallery program. So most of the time, it's just me go out and find the artist yeah, yeah no and like you mentioned mfa open studios are mm -hmm. a great place to meet mm -hmm. uh, up-and-coming artists yeah. you'll sometimes you'll find that gem uh, <laughs> yeah. that's just budding um so those those are great spots to definitely yes. look um i wanted to also ask you what do you think your favorite aspect is of your job oh mm, that's a great question i think there's actually a lot of great aspects um, for running a gallery. One of the things is 
um, it keep me like keep my curiosity. Um, mm -hmm. I constantly meet different kind of artists and also constantly meet different types of individuals. I, I love to talk to people because everyone have their own story, their own experience. And from those, I I can always um, learn something, mm -hmm. um, especially, for example, artists, they are they are a different group of people. And every for artist, sure. they, have, yeah, they have all kinds of, Thoughts, idea, which can be very, very inspirational and very interesting. And on the other hand, the uh, on the other side, the the collector side or the people who buy art, they come from different kind of this uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. They come from different background, and they have their own story, whether it's relate to art or not relate to art. So, I really enjoy this process of. Uh, talking to people and learning their 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 experience also learning their their story with art um to sort of make me reflect my uh, like constantly thinking about why i'm doing what i'm doing and how we should look at art i think this is a um, question like no matter which stage you're at in your career like how what is art to you, it's it's a constantly question that mm -hmm. that I think about. Um, the other thing I really love uh, about it is um, because I work with emerging artists, so it's 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 an artist who are in their early stage of career. So we go through all the process together. So we do the exhibition together. I introduce their work to collectors. It's a time consuming process, um, but also it's a very precious um, process and time for me to build up a very special relationship with the artist or with the collector. So I really appreciate those those time and, and, and process. I think it means a lot. Yeah, that makes my, yeah, I think my career like full, yeah. So when you're working with an artist, uh, whether you're representing them or just showing their mm. work, um, how do you go about, um, you know, working with them on an exhibition? Uh, mm -hmm. How long does that usually take? What mm. are the first steps? Yeah. So for example, right now I'm already um, start to plan the exhibition for next year. Mm -hmm. So I normally, if I decide to say, okay, I want to work with this artist for example, for a solo show, um, I'll bring this idea up. If if the artist wanted to do this together, then I I wanted to leave enough time for the artist to prepare um, uh, the the project. And most of the time, in 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 terms of ma art making process, most of the time I leave this to the artist. I don't want to intervene too much, even though I know, like, of course, each artist, the way how they approach to their practice, also the way they approach to expressions, also different. Some artists, they they will think about, okay, they will think about what the market want or mm -hmm. what the collector might uh, my think about the work. Some artists they don't really care. They they just into the in their yeah. own world. <laughs> so for me, I respect um, the way how artists want to go about their work for a specific show. Um, but I I also discuss um, things with them. Um, I want them to feel comfortable um, while working with me or working on um, a, a specific project. Um, and and apart from the art m making process, other side of work, I think that's my uh, duty and the responsibility mm -hmm. to to handle them well. So yeah, I. I just try to leave artists, um, um, I hope them feel comfortable with just focusing on their own work and then mm -hmm. I do my part and yeah. How long would you say usually it takes an artist to put on a show? Uh, for a solo show? I mean? Yeah, for a solo show. I, I, th I want to at least leave them more than half a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, of course, yeah, you know, as a gallerist, it's your 
well, one of the biggest uh, responsibilities is to nurture these artists and, you know, their legacy and to put them in touch with a great collector base. Mm-hmm. Um, the collectors that you work with, um, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, how you kind of um, build their relationship with the artist or how do you usually advise collectors? Are you only working with collectors who might be interested in collecting the artists that you show or are you mm. also working with collectors you know outside of your gallery program who mm. might be looking at different artists for mm. example yeah um so to be honest um so the gallery here in new york um for me i feel it's a new um project for me mm-hmm. so I, one of my goal is to um, slowly build up the clientele he, here in um, in the U.S. Um, because with my previous experience, um, most of my collection, they are in Asia. So exploring the local um, market, um, it's... I think it takes time. Uh, it takes time for me to slowly get to know more collector, art advisor, all kinds of people in the art. So um, up till now, I, I got to meet uh, some new uh, clients here in the U.S. Um, I, of course, uh, I think artist is the pri- my artist is a priority. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I want them to. First, when I meet the uh, collector, I guess it's case by case. Sometimes um, I think it's important to know what they have been collecting. Yes. Yeah, what kind of, like, whether they have a certain direction in their collecting um, or they are just sort of looking around different mm-hmm. different things. Um, and then I, yeah, artists, I, I think it's the most important thing. So I wanted to introduce my artists, my program to them. Uh, of course, I sometimes I meet some um, new client. I I feel my the 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 work I'm showing might not match perfectly yet into their um, collection. Mm-hmm. But I feel especially for younger collector, I think the they are also learning in the process. Yeah. So um, it's, um, as I said just now, it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of time building up the relationship and also the way how people looking at art, read art also evolve over time. So um, I think, so I feel it's 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 a process that I keep them informed what I'm doing, and also through my exhibition or through my selection of artists, I also wanted to um, broaden the way how people um, look at art, but also thinking about um, what kind of art they can actually be placed at home or what kind of art they can actually bring into their collection. Um, I I feel there's a lot of uh, paintings Mm -hmm. out there. (coughs) Excuse me. I feel there are a lot of painting out there but for me, for example, my personal um, interest uh, or taste is like I like artists who work with different materials. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel, yeah, I, I, I feel art provide, good art provide a lot of um, possibility and imaginations. And for collector, um, there can be all kinds of things in their co- collection as long as they are opened up um, the way they think about art. So yeah. That's okay, how great. Um, would you say that when you do these art fairs, um, that you meet new collectors who become interested in your programming? Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So the during the art fairs, yeah. do you do you meet uh, potential clients that end up staying with you and and following your programming? Mm. So because um, we just um, participate in our first um, fair, mm-hmm. so through that fair, I met some uh, potential uh, um, client. Um, they were interested in, in the artists that I showed during the fair, um, and also. Um, the artist I showed uh, for the fair this May, mm-hmm. uh, we will doing his solo show in September. Okay, so right. I think that's a good sort of starting point where I can um, receive some feedback uh, or 
let the audiences have a general kind of impression what kind of work the artist um, makes. Um, so I think, yeah, the, the affair uh, is really very helpful for me to um, get to know the client and have a um, start to have an idea uh, what kind of conversation we can, we can build up. What do you think are some, well, <coughs> what do you think? I mean, what, what do you know are some of the challenges of running a gallery, especially in New York City for you? Um, I think um, our business is a um, relationship-based business. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of time, like connection is very important. Context is very important. So for me, um, coming from China, um, like coming from China, um, uh, encountering all these different, like here in US, um, in my past uh, years here, staying in New York, I'm also learning how the art world here works, yeah. how the art system uh, works here. I mean, it's a, it's established like uh, it's a very established art system. A museum, gallery, curator, writer—they play their role in in this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So. Um, for me, um, as one individual who works in the art, um, I feel it's very important to find my position here in this giant um, ocean. Um, so um, I think one of the challenging thing is to know people. Mm -hmm. uh, and to let people know me as well, because I'm come here like I know nobody, yeah. and nobody's know me. Yeah. And our industry is a relationship based, and and also it's all about trust mm -hmm. as well. So building up the trust and build up the relationship, it takes time. So our yeah, but this is very challenging. But this is also expected. Mm -hmm. um, so we all know that how things work. So it's just the time we need to spend to do things and let people see what you are doing. And then through this process, you get to meet people with similar interests or similar value, and you get to work with people with similar um, interests and then um, slowly and expand and build up um, your own community. Yeah. So basically, people have to be patient. <laughs> and I think put in so. The yeah, leg everyone work. in the art has to be patient. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but apart from running the gallery, mm -hmm. you're also a writer and a curator. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you enjoy about writing and curating? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I will say I, because I I feel up till now most of my my time spent were on like running gallery. Um, I do write and curate uh, occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer, um, because I like to meet people, like have, I like having this kind of one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation. Um, so um, most of the writing pieces I did, I think in, in recent year mm -hmm. as a interview um, of say a curator in Asia and, or a dealer or a art fair organizer, uh, organizer so through writing this kind of pieces I uh, because they are all important part or they are all in the art world mm -hmm. so f each individual they can provide a very different perspective um, at their position so I really enjoy having this conversation with them and learn about the experience and then also sort of put what they shared in a bigger context mm -hmm. and share um, with the readers um, a curator um, I did curate some um, some small and mid-sized um, exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, even when I came to New York, I did some um, curatorial project back in China, like remotely with my um, working partner back in China. Um, for those uh, projects, I, uh, I feel it's much more free because mm -hmm. I don't, it's, it's out of the gallery context. Yeah. Um, and there's, so with a different context, I was able to work 
with artists that I might not be able to work in, in the gallery context and also depends on what kind of venue, what kind of space. Um, there are a lot of like um, different way of uh, doing expression um, compared to like doing shows in, in gallery. So I think those uh, projects act as an um, additional fun part of my work. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. And you know, I can relate so much to, mm. to the way that you describe writing and interviewing people mm. because that's the whole thing about this podcast is, yeah. you know, I love sitting down with people, learning about their experiences, learning about them and, you know, putting it in the larger context that is the art world because, you know, for those who might not be part of it yet, mm. it's hard to understand an industry, you know, that you don't work in. Um, so all these experiences and stories, I love hearing them from yeah. everybody. Yeah. Um, so I think this would be a great time to kind of segue back into the, your start. Mm -hmm. Um, so essentially your studies, um, because you have like a hundred degrees, <laughs> <laughs> you have a BA degree with a double major in art history and media and communications mm -hmm. from Melbourne university. You have a one year study in Asian art history at Korea university, and then you have a master's in international business at Sydney <laughs> University. And then on top of that, you have an MFA in the history of art and art market of Christie's education. So can you can you take us a little bit step by step on okay. how you kind of went about um, mm -hmm. doing these degrees? And then I, the most useful thing that you have gotten out of those degrees. Okay. Okay, so um, so I studied in Australia. So mm -hmm. I went to Australia um, from high school. So after high school, I I yeah went to Melbourne Uni and did art history and media communication um, for my study. So I back then I actually had more interest in media communication, like um, journalism, public relations. Um, and the study in Korea, that was because I did this exchange program. Mm -hmm. So I spent one year in Korea. And then um, during that period, that's, yeah, the, the focus was on um, the Asian, Asian art history, something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I also like, there was a, short period um, right after undergrad I was I wanted to find a job in consulting firm okay yeah so there was okay. a period I applied tell us lot. about it <laughs> <laughs> no I I always like like I mean I love art I love like cultural related or creative related field but I also very interested in how things running like how things work like those strategic um, marketing related planning this kind of thing so that's why I went into international business business for my graduate study mm -hmm. at Sydney university so I feel my well looking back I I feel the the stu the study that I chose to do kind of reflect uh who I am like I don't see myself as a very academic, like very research oriented. You could have of... fooled me with all these degrees. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like to bring in different things together. Like I want to have a little bit art. I want to have some business. Um, I want to have. So I, I, I like this kind of cross disciplinary things, putting them together. Um, and in, in the real world, I mean, you need to have a sense, like you need to know about business. You need to oh, be yes. yeah, a good observer of everything. Um, and in terms of art, well, art in a way, it's very subjective, mm -hmm. but still you need to have a strong, I mean, you need to know art history and you need to know how things develop over time. And, and so I, I don't want it to be just one, like into one area mm -hmm. i wanted to know um a broader be a gen generalist or, okay. or something like that um so i like organized things i like to bring in different things together and see i see what kind of thing we can make there um and yeah so that's what i did in australia and then back to china running the gallery for a few years and then coming to us Mm, the study at Christie's for the MFA, that was fun. Um, but also there was a reason that 
getting a student visa that was the easiest way oh, for me okay. to <laughs> smart for me to get to um the US mm-hmm. um because i at the very beginning i wasn't planning to stay in US for a long time. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking, okay, I can come here with a student visa, study a little bit. I think it would be great to have a year or two break from work and then just observe how things work here. And then I can go back after the study. Yeah. So, but it was nice to, um, I, the Christie education, they, they don't run the MFA program anymore. I know, yeah. which is really sad because I loved mine. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so I, because they had um, the business uh, yes. uh, route and also the art history route, yeah. right? So yeah, I yeah, did yeah. the history. I think it's really good to always revise and to look back uh, what's there and then inform me something new. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, you speaking about your degrees and, and the ones that you did receive, it seems like all of them really informed you being a gallery owner because, you know, from business to art history uh, to communications, these are all skills that you need in mm. running a gallery yeah definitely and also i feel yeah you're totally right i mean gallery is um you're like a one woman e- show so you gotta know everything together. yeah <laughs> yeah and also i i feel my experience say living in australia spending some time in korea and china and now in the u.s i like to i feel nowadays like individual are like constantly travel or I mean pandemics so things that um, everyone, no one can can predict it but mm-hmm. but I think more and more like each individual um it's very hard for one individuals to stay just one place and we all carry something that we learn from different culture or different places so I think my experience uh, of uh, studying abroad or living uh, or working abroad uh, and also together with my own like Chinese cultural background or together, it's it's a very mixed kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I I really like that. And I I meet a lot of individuals of similar kind of like they constantly travel or they lived in different city or different country, um, end up in New York and they might later on move to a different place. So yeah, I think nowadays people are, are not really stick yeah. to one place. No, there are nomads yeah. at this point, and especially in New York. It's a melting pot yeah, of cultures. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, most of us are immigrants. I mean, I'm an immigrant in mm. this country, so I, I can totally relate. Yeah. Um, how, how often do you go back to China or like how often? do you still you know do art or art business in China yeah I try to for now because I have the physical space so it's a little bit hard to be away for too long but I try to go back to China or Asia uh, once or twice a year Um, I think it's very important to keep in contact getting um, keep connected with the people back there Mm -hmm. um, to be informed what's going on over there because in Asia there's a million of things going on every day as well and and the development development thing like they develop very fast and then it's very important to keep my eyes on uh, Asia as well so um, for right now at this stage my focus is still in the U.S. like Mm -hmm. the early stage of my gallery space here but in the future ideally I can sort of uh, doing more this kind of project with the people back in Asia. Yeah. And the, I mean, you already know, but like the Asian art market is, is also mm. booming. There's a huge clientele. There's also a lot yeah. of art fairs. So there's also a lot of, you know, art and, and work to be done there as well. Yes. So yes. the connection that you have is, you know, works out great. Mm. Yeah. So for, uh, for the future, um, do you want to bring any artists or mm. do you want to work with any previous artists that you worked with in China to New York? Mm. I hope so. In the future, um, I feel artists um, in China, they are in a very different um, market environment or just environment in general, different environment in general. Um, in the future, I do want to bring some artists who lived in Asia to the U.S. or work with 
a gallery in who whose space is in Asia to do mm -hmm. sort of like exchange kind of project together. Um, I think that'll be very meaningful. Yeah. Are you excited about any upcoming shows at your gallery that you want to tell us about? Yeah. So we are opening a group show soon mm -hmm. um, in early June. Um, and then more excitedly, uh, in September, we're going to do um, this artist solo show who we showed in at Future Fair, Quick Jun Lee. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, there's several like solo show already lined up for this year and next year. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about the work of the artists that you're showing in June and then in September? Oh, sure. Um, in June, so it's a four artist, a four artist uh, group show. Mm -hmm. So this time it's gonna be painting primarily. Okay. So since I started the gallery space, so so far um, we've done four shows, but none of the show um, were fully dedicated to painting. So this one is going to be a painting show. Okay. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. And then the artist that you <coughs> took to the fair and then you're showing in September, can you tell us a little bit about his work? Yeah. Quick Jun Lee, he um, is still a hunter, oh, okay. um, but he, he he already have a very um, sort of a mature kind of way um, approach of his practice. And, and his work is more on the conceptual side. Mm -hmm. um, he does a lot of research for each of his um, uh, project. Um, so, and he is interested in like looking at how information is circulated in, in society and how we, that, how the value is um, created or recreated throughout the process. Um, and he, his work, he, he always play with different kind of materials, whether it's a print or a mixed median or a sculpture or installation. So there will be a lot of um, different things um, uh, in the solo show, uh, which uh, opening in, in September. So, and also he's very um, mysterious kind of uh, okay. individual. <laughs> so sometimes I don't know what he's doing, but I fully trust him. Okay. So I'm super excited about his solo show. Right. Is yeah. this his first solo show in New York? Um, for him? Yeah. Um, he did some like small scale um, like project, okay. uh, solo project before, but I believe this is his first, um, yeah, gallery solo show in New York. Well, I'm excited to come and see it. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm excited too. Yeah. Um, so I want to kind of wrap up the interview and mm -hmm. ask you sort of for any advice that you might offer, you know, women who might be wanting to start their own mm -hmm. gallery or moving to New York. Uh, any last pearls of wisdom? Wow. <laughs> Moving to New York, yeah, I feel, because I came to New York without any, because it was a quick decision mm -hmm. for me to say, okay, I'm going to go to New York and stay a year or two. So what made you go like, you know what, this is it, I want to do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, New York is the center. Yes. Of everything. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go there. So I think sometimes maybe just not overthinking, mm -hmm. just do it. Okay. Do it, be there, out there, and then you'll experience, and then you'll know what to do next. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, I, I don't know, sometimes I t also tend to be thinking too much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. But then I realized, like, the more you think, the more become more difficult for you to take action. So I guess my advice is would be, like, just put words into action or yeah. just... Sometimes just don't think too much. <laughs> Although it's, yes. it's not easy, but um, I mean, have a have a as long as there's a big direction, you know what you want to do, you know like what where your passion is, mm -hmm. and then just go for it, do it, and see what happens. Yeah. I were think. you scared or nervous when you were first moving here? So that's the thing. So because that was a quick decision, mm -hmm. I didn't expect too many things. I said, oh, I'll just go and see what happened. And then I also didn't plan for long term. Mm -hmm. So um, I was thinking, okay, maybe just a year or two thing. So I just, so that actually made things more easier. Mm -hmm. So I just moved here smoothly, did the Christie's MFA. And then I did decide, oh, I love here. Let me see whether I can figure out my visa, whether I can stay here. Mm -hmm. And then I applied the visa 
And then pandemic came. Like sometimes things just unfold on its yeah. own. So I think um, also the state of mind just sometimes just let it like go with the flow. I think that's that's yeah. very no, important. that's that that's true. Yeah. So when you were doing your MFA, mm -hmm. um, then you were you you still had the gallery, but it wasn't in a physical space, and it wasn't until 2023 that you opened the physical space. Yes, yes. So when I came to New York, I closed the space in China, mm -hmm. uh, thinking that um, I I gonna I, I gonna go back after two years, so it's it's okay. So I uh, so I didn't have a physical space for quite a while, and I didn't like work. I, I was yeah study, um, and then in 2022, I. I rebranded the gallery and then uh, did a new website and started with an uh, online exhibition. Okay. Mm. And then we did four online exhibitions. And then I found the, um, found the space and then start the space last year. What made you want to be in, because you're in, you're located in Chinatown, right? The space? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's like inter LES or yeah, it's an intersection of Chinatown, Tribeca Soho. Okay. Yeah, but but it's yeah, Chinatown. Yeah. What made you want to be in that area? Well, I mean, like downtown Manhattan. Mm -hmm. That's where I think most of the galleries are now, especially for uh, mid size to small size yeah. gallery, and that's where new artists. You will expect new artists. You you, you can discover new artists over there. So. Yeah, I think uh, in terms of uh, a, a general kind of positioning of the gallery, I think uh, um, Chinatown, Tribeca, that area fits best. Did yeah. it take you a long time to find the space? Yeah, it's nearly <laughs> one year. Wow. But that was a super interesting journey for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I contacted a lot of real estate agents and just followed them um, to check out different spaces in different parts. Like, I... I, I think I checked out most of the space, like in Lower East Side, Chinatown, Two Bridges, uh, Tribeca, and also Flat uh, Flatiron, Chelsea, mm -hmm. like different kind of areas. It was really interesting to see um, different spaces. Yeah. So what made you finally take the leap and decide this is the space? Did it just like speak to you? Or like, yes, this is it. Yeah, I, well, during the process, I was still like searching for space. Mm -hmm. um, like, like there was period like was didn't really feel like ah why I couldn't find like took so long time, mm -hmm. and like some of my friends they just try to encourage me says ah oh, you'll find it you'll know it. Um, so this um, this particular space in terms of the size, the budget, the location. Um, I was happy with that, but I think more importantly, I feel at, at some point you have to make a decision mm -hmm. because the the research can like the searching can go on and on forever. In yeah, New York, forever. Yes, yeah, for there's sure. no yeah, there's no and there's and there's no like, completely perfect um, place. So so for me, I think I at some point I need to make the decision and get things started. Yeah. Okay. So this space was the closest to what you really wanted yeah. for for your gallery space. Yeah. And also the timing and the space itself, all things together and say, okay, I'm going to take this. Okay. So yeah. again, <laughs> being patient because it took a very long time. Yeah. So don't get discouraged <laughs> yes, if you're yes. ever in this sort of predicament. Yeah. But I feel, yeah, I think also throughout the process, the, your mind, everything changes. Um, but at some point, you know, that is the point you need to make the decision. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story. Thank you so much. It was much. great chatting. And now I'm going to put you in the hot seat okay. with my <laughs> fire round of questions. Um, okay. So pick a number between one and 10 and then I'll, I'll read the corresponding question to you. Okay. Number six. Number six. What is a piece of art that you own that you would never sell or one that is your favorite? Oh. I mean, for a gallerist, I'm sure this is hard, so. Yeah, it's very hard. Like, I owned some of the artists that I showed mm -hmm. before, like, smaller pieces. It's really, really hard. Like, they're, like, your little child. Yeah, or, I, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, hmm. I, I have a sculpture pieces by... Um, this Japanese artist, um, 
Ah, oh, what's what's her name? What's her name? So she showed at Tomplon Gallery. Okay. Um, you know she used the strength. <gasps> yes. Oh. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. It, it just, starts with a C H. She small sculpture, very signature kind of her work, and it's a black color string mm-hmm. and wrapping the, uh, a small trumpet. Um, because I love music, so that oh, yeah, beautiful. so that piece really speak to me. Um. Yeah, I don't know, like, cause, cause I, like, most of the time I'm a gallerist, so the works that I own, um, I don't know. Each each of them have very like different connection with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think they are all very very important. Yes, I actually saw her work for the first time when I was on a trip to Bergen in Norway out of all places and they have this incredible museum I think it's K-O-D-E I just say code I don't know Mm. what it's like in 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 Norwegian but um they had a a show of her work Mm. there and there was this huge installation that she did there was like a boat in the center Mm -hmm. and then there was these red strings like coming out in Mm -hmm. the entire room and that was the first time I saw her work and I was absolutely blown away yes yes and i also Definitely. saw the show that she had recently i think it was like a year or two ago mm. that she had a teplon gallery mm. also um it just incredible yeah, it's just beautiful yeah yeah Definitely. she's great yeah okay question number two pick <laughs> <laughs> number eight number eight what's a book you read that you didn't want to end oh <laughs> These are very, very... These are all hard. You, yeah, yeah, very you, this, challenging. no easy question here. Yeah, the book on there. Oh, it's really difficult. Mm. Like, for me, it's like when I finish one book, like, it's really hard for me to, like, go back. Like, I, mm-hmm. I like to keep feeding myself with new stuff. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, I guess recently I read a book about how the reverse thinking can be applied in marketing. Okay. Like they were talking about how Red Bull, Red Bull, Bull, um, how, because when people talk about Red Bull, they don't like the taste. Like a lot of people mm-hmm. were saying the Red Bull tastes like yeah really um bad but because of this and also with different marketing strategies um it become like one of the one of the largest like um like company like drinking yeah Yeah. so the book talk about how like sometimes people try to follow the logic but if you like follow logic very like strictly follow logic Mm -hmm. It actually stop you like the the other part of the brain, like the imagined part. But mm-hmm. sometimes um, human is not a totally logic human 100%, being. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically I think encourage people to thinking outside the box and not all like you don't have to follow the rules like strictly. Like sometimes something unexpected happen if you just take take it easy and yeah yeah being creative exactly yeah yeah no that's that's great yeah. actually okay final question number one <laughs> number one okay <laughs> this one's gonna be very hard for you oh name an artist you admire oh wow this is super difficult yeah oh there's so many artists out there like like from different generations yeah Right. Well, I was I say a common one like Van Gogh. Okay. Yeah, because I read about um, his. Um, uh, there's several books about like his uh, biography mm-hmm. and host, uh, and also his uh, his letter with his brother who mm-hmm. supported his uh, entire career uh, career. I mean, whether he's uh, mentally like this is kind of deba- debating also mysterious. Uh, uh, topic that whether he's really mentally has uh, has illness or whatever but van gogh as a artist or an individual the way how he crazy about art just for art like mm-hmm. there's nothing can stop him uh doing what he wants to do and i think this kind of quality 
as an artist is not so easy to find in today's time because yeah. there's so many distraction out there there's so many different option out mm -hmm. there especially because I, I met um, because I work with in, uh, emerging artists and I also met a lot of people who just graduated from school I think there's one important question is why there's so many options out there why you want to still like put your life into art or why you want, still want to make art as your lifelong career like when you can have other maybe better yeah. easier option yeah. so yeah the story of Van Gogh or his life even though it's a sort of tragic ending um, not tragic uh, tragic because he died at young age, age, yeah. age but I feel like the way how he devote himself into our um, the that kind of honesty, sincerity, and that kind of belief and faith into art. I mm -hmm. think, yeah, that's really inspiring. Yeah, yeah, I mean, one of my favorite places to still visit is the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. Mm, yeah, uh, it's incredible. But yeah, like you said, his story. He was so consumed by creating art that it literally filled every ounce of his body and his being yeah even when things you know were not looking great like no one was buying them yeah. his brother was like literally one of his only supporters yeah. um he still kept with it and he's yeah. like this is the only thing that i want to do yeah definitely i think nowadays there's there's a market there's there's so many voices out there yeah um can sort of affect or like with the social media, all the things, like there's so many information out there. Mm -hmm. And and then for for artists, how 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 the artist wants to place himself in the art world or how the artists want to define themselves as artists is really yeah. Yeah, I think artists, especially today, are I mean, like you said, there's so many voices around them mm -hmm. that it's probably hard to just listen to your own mm. you know because there is social media is the whole culture of comparison yeah. and like what everyone is doing yeah. and you know at, at one point do you disconnect and you go you know what i'm going to trust my gut and my feelings and this is what i'm going to do yeah definitely i think just be true to oneself that's the most yeah. it's, it's a difficult task but that's mm -hmm. the most important thing yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your pearls of wisdom with me today. Thank you for having me of and the course. conversation. Yeah, it was amazing. Thank um, you. And to my viewers and listeners, um, if you want to get in touch with Rain, please let me know. Um, and I'd love to connect you. And please go see the shows that are opening in June and September uh, at Rain Rain Gallery. Um, and then I'll see everybody on the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. Thank Bye. you. Bye.